um, the one and only, the legendary Alibaba. Um, I'd like to now recognize to come next on stage um, Nigeria's premier gospel DJ, the one and only DJ Gosporella. Please make him feel very welcome. Welcome, sir. And finally, for this segment, I'd like to welcome the chairman himself of multiple diverse business enterprises, um, a legend in his own right, one and only Omoba DJ Rao, to come on stage at this time. Thank you, sir. Um, I, I, let me ask, let me start from my far left. Let me start from Omoba DJ Rao. Um, we're talking business. We're not talking our personal lives, but our personal lives cannot be divorced from our businesses. Okay, what, what prompted you to go into X to D, and how exactly are you making money from X to D? Thank you very much. A pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, X to D uh, means exclusive to divinity. It's a Christian-inspired entertainment and lifestyle TV channel. Uh, the brand is like 15 years old now, but we started the channel in 2006. Um, for me, I've always been interested in entertainment, uh, media, things. And what led me there is, is an assignment. Um, I felt, I'd, I'd taken an interest in broadcasting since I was in university. And I began to be on radio, be on TV, do different things. But I felt that a gap, and I noticed that gap when I worked with my friend Tony Subad at High TV. Um, we, I was the first channel manager for High TV, and I noticed that there was a, a build-up to um, what you call local content. That was when Nigeria's music industry was 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 coming up, and I was in charge of the family, safe family entertainment channel called the High Life Channel. And I realized that I was struggling to buy Nigerian content for broadcast. Um, it was easy to buy different things, soaps, different things that were not um, safe and family friendly or Christian inspired. Uh, but I knew that over the time, you know, I'd always had this vision of building uh, something. And I think one of the things that inspired me was the fact that I was coming back after serving in Jaws, I think it was 1997, thereabout. And, and I heard God tell me clearly that this talent I've given you, I'm going to need you to go into broadcast and it will be something that glorifies my name and honors my name and builds family and is able to do stuff. So that the idea had always been there. But when I now walked in high TV and I saw what was happening with Nigeria's local content, that was the rise. And at that time, what we did in high TV was that those who are living in the UK on the Sky Network, we actually put the Nigeria channel and High Noli on Sky. So for the first time in, in, in the world, people in the UK were able to watch what was happening in Nigeria real time. That was what broke the barrier of earlier before then, when you release a song in Nigeria, the UK guys hear it maybe two weeks, three weeks later. But that was what made UK and Nigeria be on the same page. So as the beginning of the rise, we just found out that all of us were in the UK and the channels that, that particular channel was winning awards literally all over the place. And, you know, it kind of inspired me to say, if I was going to go on this journey of building this, you know, Christian-inspired entertainment channel for God, I needed to start that conversation now. So uh, that was basically what it was. So for me, it wasn't a money conversation that started, you know, XTD for me. It was that issue of trying to make entertainment safe, trying to glorify God, and trying to create an ecosystem like we're talking about where... We build different communities where, yes, we are making money, but at the same time, we are passing positive message and values about Nigeria, about who we are, and how we can use Christianity to be able to be a blessing to the world around us. Now, concerning the money conversation there, just like, um, you know, our big brother Ali Baba just said, you will realize that there is an ecosystem. So what will happen is the fact that the more you look into a particular industry or area, you will find where the money is. You will find where it connects. So for me, you know, starting the TV platform, getting cameras meant I could rent cameras out, like he said. I also realized that I could cover events. I also realized that I could do productions for people. I also realized that we could become a channel and begin to take adverts. So the more you stay in an industry, the more you will see 
the loopholes and where you can plug in. So all you just need to do is keep building capacity. And as you keep building capacity, and like, you know, he also said, uh, it was Inu that talked about building systems. Systems are those things that ensure that whatever you are doing is interconnected. And at the end of the day, you, it brings you what you need to bring. So that was basically the foundation of what it was. So even till now, we are still seeing new uh, business initiatives that can be plugged into what we're doing. So you'll find out that as you keep going on, you know, the money keeps telling you I'm here and then you keep diversifying and building capacity in that area. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That, that's fantastic summary. What I heard at the end of that is that money talks. Money tells you I'm here. Uh, money, money gives you the direction to go. Something is unique about you and DJ Gosparella, which maybe Alibaba doesn't have directly. You started from a Christian platform. Um, DJ Gosparella is still gospel rela. Alibaba is a hustler. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's not church. You go there, there. It's not be church. I mean, Alibaba covers barriers. Anything. <laughs> okay. So, DJ Gosparella, I want to take that question to you from that. You are going along the gospel line. Um, the first question is, number one, is there really money in gospel? Then two, this DJ work you are doing, this DJ work you are doing, I've seen there's been a transition from our DJs. I mean, Jimmy Jatt was doing DJ later. He started to also record music. Um, now this Lagos we did, we did you know, record DJ copies, recording music, Neptune, Spin All, um, exclusive. Everybody's recording music now, not just playing, not just doing DJ. But you have also started recording music as well. Is it that doing DJ alone is not enough? You must diversify. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, to answer that question, the last one, the Yorubas will say, Onoko Woja. And that means that one road does not lead into the market. Yeah? So if you call yourself a DJ and that's all you know how to do, especially if you are a gospel music DJ, hungry go catch you. Yeah, it's just like, uh, well, I'm not trying to uh, put anybody down. It's just like you just been saying that I am a pastor and pastoring is all that you do. Yeah, truth of the matter is all of us know that when God calls you into ministry, you have just been called into sacrifice. That's what we do a lot. Yeah, so being a DJ is very uh uh, I was a secular DJ before I was a gospel music DJ. Or, you know, I was called into it. It's a ministry. If you ask me now if being a secular DJ is more, uh, uh, what's the word now? It's more lucrative than being uh, a gospel DJ. I would say to you that it's me having my cake, eating my cake and having it. Yeah, because I work for the owner of the earth. Lots of people have asked me, how do you survive? And I say to them that the person whom you work for pays you. You have to first and foremost know what you are doing and why you are doing what you are doing and who you are responsible to. I am responsible to God. Now, let me say this. I was earning as a secular DJ. I was the highest paid DJ at that time in Nigeria. I say it all the time. I was working at a nightclub right here in Lagos in Victoria Island. I was earning 40,000 Naira a weekend. DJs were being paid 10,000 Naira a month at the time. Yeah? And that was when God called me. And when he called me, I said to him, this work that you have called me into, because as at that time, the best music that was gospel music that anybody could play was lift him up. If you know that, you know, Don Moen. And here I was, a DJ who was playing hip hop. I was playing all the head banging songs in the club. And I said to him, I can't do this. Well, God will not force you. He just keeps quiet. And what he did to me was, he made me to hate the music that I was playing. I have no regrets today because if people ask me now, do you have money? I will say yes. Where is the money? Even I can't see it, but when I need it, I get it.
It's a sacrifice that, if you agree, it was a covenant. I caught it with him. When eventually I discovered that this is the reason why God created me, when I discovered that if I want to continue to do what I am doing right now, I will end up in an entity. I agreed. I ran anyways. It took me three years before I finally say, said yes. I was called in 2000. Inside the nightclub was where God called me, called me out of the dark places. Now I have a book in the writing that I called from the nightclub to the light club. It's, 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 it's coming, yes? The Gosporella brand is going to be 20 years on 1st of July, and we are doing something massive, yes? So, so what, what am I trying to say? The business of being in the business of God is lucrative. In that, if you know what you are doing and you walk on water like a barefoot prophet. Okay, I speak in parables. <laughs> you know, like when God calls you, because somebody has asked me who is in the business of gospel uh, uh, entertainment, if you might call it that. I don't believe I'm in entertainment. I am in ministry. Yeah. He has asked me, bros, you want to tell me, say, now only this DJ now you they do. Uh, I said yes. And he said, are you sure you don't do any of that thing that is giving you all this? Okay, all the fly things that you are doing and all that. Uh, and I said to him, I need you to understand that if he called you, he will also make provisions for you. Now, what is left is if you can manage the provisions that he makes for you. Lots of us, we take the money that God gives us to run ministry, to run our own personal deals. And that's why we go broke. So, yes. There is money in this business because the person we work for is the owner of the earth and the fullness thereof. Yes? And then, now, I'm not just saying that because I'm here as a panelist. It's, it has to do with your belief system. Yes? My belief system is such that I am too stubborn. I would have left this, seriously, I would have left this if I was not called into it. Yeah, because it's very, it's a very difficult, sacrificial feed. Nobody has ever done gospel music DJing before. And you just come from somewhere and you say, I'm a gospel. Even pastors were telling me, you want to corrupt our children. So how do you run that? Yes, as for transitioning, it's part of it. I don't do music because of the money I want to make out of it. I, always, I do music to set a pace. I tell the gospel because I'm also into artist profiling and music promotions, yes? So for the artist to get to know what next to do, I am in contemporary, I'm not in praise and worship. My business is for young people. And all the music I do, I direct it at the young minds because they are the ones, yeah, who are the future of the church. And if you want to know where your children are every weekend, go and check the nightclubs. That's why we must have light clubs. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I mean, please pick from what they're saying. It talked about artist profiling just now. It talked about music promotion just now. In trying to answer another question, those are also business channels too that you need to also think of. Okay, a lot of questions have come in. Um, I'm going to ask Alibaba one question about Excuse Moi. Um, I know Excuse Moi has been in your heart for years. Not just the event, please. It's not a TV station. It has transitioned. I mean, I was at Excuse Moi in 2000 and I think six. It was MTN that was doing a tour of Two-Face and Friends. And that was where Nice was discovered. And Nice came on stage at your excuse me. And I was like, who is this guy? This guy must blow. This guy must blow. But now, it's no longer an event center only. It has transitioned into a TV station. So just tell us quickly about the dream and how you're making money from different sources along the dream. So first, it's the... Uh Discovering, discovering the talent that you have and applying it to different things. One, one of such applications is, um, is that once God has given you a talent, what you use it for is now based on your potentials. You now you determine what you use the talent for because you then make the talent respond to needs. For instance, uh, what God gave Joseph was dreaming. 
That was what he gave him. And he became a prime minister. Oh. He became a prime minister just from dreaming. And he applied himself to different things. He applied himself to, to being kind to people. Applied himself to holding values that many people would have uh, dropped. And so for me, the talent that I have is... I'm an ideas man, really. Beyond being a comedian, I'm an ideas man. I, I come up with ideas that I think hold a lot of values. And those values are what people then buy into. So, like I, I tell people, I said, if you know how to sing until somebody is ready to pay for it, it is a hobby. Any, any talent that you have, until you transition that talent to being of service to somebody, it is a hobby. So, if you know how to sing well, you sing very well. But nobody's paying you for it, then it's just a talent that you have. Yeah. So until until you move the talent that you have to becoming something essential in other people's businesses, if you know how to speak, uh, you are a motivational speaker. And also, until you can package something that will make a UBA say, "Come and talk to our staff in HR. Oh, come and speak to our guys in procurement." Come and talk to our drivers. Then you want I, I, I know a coach, life coach, who was invited by a, a leasing company to come and talk to drivers. And I was like, how much did they pay? He said they paid 500000 to talk to the drivers. I'm sure if they told the drivers that they paid somebody 500000 to come and talk to them, the drivers would be like, give us the money, we'll talk to ourselves. <laughs> But what was important was that the guy was paid to come and talk to them because some of the drivers were beginning to lose focus. They were costing the company money, making the company look bad, and endangering their own selves. What are the dangers of driving? Of not concentrating? Of not reporting certain things? Of undermining? So the driver, you tell the driver, go and buy tires. He will buy two tokumbos and buy two new ones and put them. Meanwhile, when the tire now busts while he's driving and he has an accident, he's lost his life. He will now put his own people in danger of not having funds to continue their lives because you're put here to provide for your people. So for me, what I do is that in every business that I do, I apply the talents that I have to meet those needs. Why did I set up an event center? I saw that there was need for an event center. Why did I start, set up a moi I spoke with the minister. I told the minister, I said, this was in 20, 2017. I told him, I said, oh, guy, I need a license. And he said, where? I said, Lagos. He said, Lagos is saturated. What do you need a license for? I said, but I need a TV license. He said, no, that if it's radio. I said, but there are too many radio stations. He said, you see, there's no need to get license again. So I told him, I said, I need a platform for the creative industry. And I cannot forget, we said, go to AIT, go to STB, do programs there. I said, but those ones are not committed to the creative industry. Now, when you look at the creative industry, you see the vacuum. Because if you watch Super Sports, you see that they have nearly eight channels or more dedicated to different things. There's golf, there's, there's uh, football, there's, uh, and there's this one that they beat themselves, WW1, the uh, UFC. The, and, and all of those. So they have several channels. And I said, in the creative industry, if you decide to have a channel like Super Sport, you have over 40. But the dedicated channels need to be hard because there's need for those channels to provide platforms for them. And, and when you say go to radio, how will you promote culinary art on radio? How will you promote fashion on radio? How will you promote dance on radio? How will you pro though there was radio drama, but you will see that there's deficiency in people connecting with the people that are acting for visuals. Even visual arts, there's so many things that are, if I want to teach people how to repair um, a phone, I can't do it on radio. So it is important for us to then speak to those needs. So the needs then drive you to create. And it's when it was the need that drove Jesus to make more fish. Yeah. 
There was, so there was a need. And if they did not come to him to say, people are hungry, he won't create it. It was the need to protect Joseph that made the mother make a basket. Uh, Moses, uh, that, that made the mother make a basket. If not, there was no need to make a basket now. That, that's how hamper business started. <laughs> Moses was the first person that was put in a hamper. <laughs> and, 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 and when you then look at that story of Moses, you then see that there's a lot of creativity and the dynamics and boxes that need to be ticked for you to succeed. It is that you don't just make the basket. You must respond to a need. For instance, you made the basket, put Moses inside and put it by that thing. And you find out that the princess that is coming to have a bad day has six children. What would she do with Moses? There's no need. And then you must also find out that there's a place that you can meet the person. So then you must respond to a market that needs you at a particular time. So timing is important. Because you would have gone there to put Moses and she doesn't come there till, till night. Moses is there, baby, you can't feed the baby. And the baby will now die, then they will now carry dead Moses. So, so the thing is, you must also then do your own research. So for me, I do a lot of that, so that by the time I bring a product out or I go on stage to tell a joke, I've done my homework. Some people see me tell a joke to a person joke and feel like he can, he can, he can do this because he's a person joke. But I've done my research. When uh, Ogo State, and uh, uh, Amoso presented a white horse to uh, Buhari when he came to launch the uh, Buhari estate that is along the road. And when I came on stage, I said, I said, well, a lot of you don't understand why the president is not liking this horse. I said, give him two cows, you will see. <laughs> Even the president laughed. The president said, yes, yes, yes. Because Cow, cow makes more sense to him than horse. He's a full animal now. <laughs> he will get cheese, he will get meat, he will get more, he will get skin. So it is responding to value. So that's what I do. So responding to value is how I create. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, let's put our hands together for that. Um, that's excellent. I'm going to come back to Alibaba on spontaneity and something else. Uh, but let me ask DG or MOBA this question um, from the audience. The question says, how do you balance the aim of making money in entertainment with your faith conviction? It's, it's a very simple conversation. Um, the way I see it, like I said, um, entertainment creativity for me is an assignment. And the aim is very simple. It's to influence the world around you for Christ, creating content that glorifies the name, builds family strength and stuff. That is the assignment. It will never change. So when money comes in, it's going somewhere. It knows where it's plugging into. So at the end of the day, what you do is to consistently cultivate a relationship with God where he's the one directing the things that you do. So at the end of the day, money is resource. Money is not supposed, is not the end game. Money is resource, is the means to an end. The end will always be to glorify God. So at the end of the day, you are not looking for money uh, excessively and compromising your values. For example, like um, they will normally would say, uh, we are already skewed. There are some things you won't be able to advertise on my channel. I take alcohol, I won't be able to take some other things. So automatically, and if I keep that, well, it's because my, my eye is on the end game. So at the end of the day, when money comes, we know where money is going. It's to fill a system that is running at the end of the day. So, But because your eye is on the one who called you and what he called you for, the money he permits to come to you must be used to run that which he has given you to run. So for me, what has helped me over the time is being led by the Spirit of God is the focus of this is an assignment. Because at the end of the day, um, I say it with all due respect. I run media, but I'm not a celebrity. So I don't position myself as one. And I don't say that the people who do, but for me, I'm a back-end person. What I want to do is put other people there. I want other people to be seen, my presenters, all this kind of stuff. But I am a person, I'm not wired to be in that space, train myself around the whole place. So I'm a back-end person. I'm looking for how this system can work, 
What can we do with it? So when money comes, it's keying somewhere in that vision. So that is what makes me uh, keep that vision you know, alive all the time, that we're here for a purpose. We're here to make entertainment safe. We're here to be able to propagate the gospel through it in a creative and an excellent way. So at the end of the day, there's no excessive loss to get money to compromise your values. And then when money comes, money goes where it needs to go because you will stand one day and give account for it. Everything that passed through your hands. And if you want to be able to give an account, then you must understand that money comes in for a purpose and it must be going to that purpose. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Um, I, I think one thing that connects three of you is not just that you're doing your business, but you're also trying to raise the next generation. You help people. I mean, I've looked at all your profiles. You help people grow, help people come up. I just mentioned spontaneity just now. I think that was the heart of it. I've seen DJ Gosporella through the decades, and that's also that's what you're also doing too. I mean, I have people that have come to your channel um, over time to do something. Small young boys that are coming up, and you give them platforms. So I want to ask... Um, DJ Gosper, uh, um, from the people that you raise, do you is there a business for you in raising them? Uh, like I said, at heart I'm a mentor. Yeah, I was I was. It's part of my calling is ensuring that young people do not misbehave, because my middle name was misbehavior when I was growing up. Yeah, and and I know what being stubborn can cause. He said something. It's not nice to sit among your friends. They know you. <laughs> okay, so so um, I mentor young people when they come to me. And for instance, a young man calls me and he says, I want to be a gospel music DJ. I said, no, you are not called to be a gospel music DJ. Say you want to be a DJ. Yeah, go and be a DJ. He said, no, I just feel this urge that I, I see. it's not about an urge. You have to be. You have to be called because this is a ministry. Oh boy, you go so far. Yeah, I say this with all my chest open. Yeah, and if I might just put it down here, uh, the, the, some some young people that come to me are very very talented, and all they need is a push. I will say it any day and anywhere. The best singers in the whole wide world are found in the church. Yeah, but unfortunately. One thing which is which even bogs me down is nobody is ready to finance them. Yeah, and so what you find out as these young people because there's no they, they are so talented. They, I see them, I know them, I know they have all this stuff. And because even me, I'm handicapped. They say picky when they they feed no they feed dog, you know. So I, I'm also handicapped. I cannot use what God has given to me for this present moment to do what he wants me to do in future because a time will come where we will run the studio, where we bring all these children in, produce them, package them, promote them, and market them. The time is coming, but we, we are not grave diggers. We don't start at the top. So when that time comes, we are going to do that. So we just mentor them. Yeah, We talk to them. We ensure that they are still keeping the part. And I say to them, you see, look, find a job. Even... Like right now, uh, there are so many gospel music DJs in Nigeria that people don't even know. And what I'm going to do at my event that is coming up on 1st of July is to introduce those guys to everybody so that Christians do not have that excuse that is because there is no gospel DJ. That is why I, I hired a secular DJ for my wedding. Yeah, that's what God told me when he gave me this ministry. Go and do the same thing in my house. I was then in the nightclub, so I didn't know what to do, but he told me what to do. And I have been following that consistently for 20 years. And if you see Nigerian gospel music today, it's not what it used to be. Thank God that we have been able to stand the test of time. And people listen to us while we are telling them, do this, do that, do this. And I'm so happy that the same music that almost everybody listens to out there that is good music to them is now gospified. Yeah? Afrobeat, hip hop, reggae, all of them, they are in gospel music. And there are DJs that will play them for you because we have mentored so many of them. They are doing good, little by little, but I also tell them, don't just be a DJ. We'll find another job because you get us to be. All right. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much.
Thank you so much. Um, so Alibaba, there's a question that has been coming up. So many people has, they've asked this question around sponsorship. How do you get sponsorship? Hello. All right, so uh, sponsorship again is, um, is a matter of value. Uh, so let me work with my, myself. So most times when I plan a show, I push out the value of the show. And so, so there's something that uh, your sponsors want. It's called mileage. Mm -hmm. Anybody that wants to buy into any idea that you have wants mileage. What will I benefit from it? And you do the post uh, mileage and the pre mileage and the post mileage. And then the event mileage. So the pre event mileage, the event mileage, and then the post event mileage. Until people see that the benefits that they will make goes beyond just sponsoring your event, yeah. they will not take part in it. Yeah. If they see that your project, your, your, your product is going to push their envelope a bit more, they wake up to it. So you see, like in a movie, uh, the reason somebody decides to pay you so that the logo of his car will show in your movie it's because they know that you will drive that car and catch the thief. So that it will look like it is the first car mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that made you catch the thief. Yeah, yeah. So that way they want you to show their logo. But if it is that in the movie, they are driving the car and it broke down on Ted Mainland Bridge, in your movie, they will not sponsor it. Because it will be, it will be reversed value. Yes, yes. They will not get any benefit from it. So what is it that you are doing? Make sure there is value. So let's go to the Bible. Why did David have value? It was that, sorry, I, I studied religious studies and philosophy in school, so most times I go to this. So in, um, in the days of the Mediterranean, the Mediterranean times, where the Israelites and a lot of them were, the watering holes was a gathering point for a lot of people. Anywhere there's a well, a lot of people just gather there. Why? That's where they give water to camels. That's where people who, uh, like the people, you know, the story was that when the travelers were going by, the brothers wanted to sell Joseph to them. So when those people are traveling, they look for holes that have water. And there's another story there, and it is that if your well does not have value, nobody comes there. That's why you can throw somebody in it because you know they will not go and look for the person. Yes. So you must continue to have value yes. for somebody to come look for you. Yes. And so those wells, they normally just gather around there, especially soldiers who have finished fighting. Yes. Now, so the soldiers will gather and be exchanging stories amongst themselves. Now, post-traumatic issues used to happen to soldiers back then. And when they have those kind of issues, listening to this boy that is playing the harp, now added value to them, mm. which was why the person now recommended him to Saul mm. and said, Sir, when you have this coin, coin, <laughs> and you want to kill somebody, there's a boy that I have that can play this thing and it will suit you. So now music does a bit more than just talent, it pacifies the king. Yes, yes. So for me, if I'm selling a product yes. or if I want somebody to buy a product, I must name the values. If I tell you I'm going to do January 1st concert yes. and I have four buses yes. that will fly Oshodi to K2, yes. uh, mile 2 to mile 12, yes. uh, K2 to CMS, yes. CMS to Aja, I'll brand all of it. Yes. And these buses will run three months before the event. If you sponsor, I'll put your name there and people will see the names. Yes. And then on the day of the event, the brochure will have your name, will show your name on the list. And then when you're walking on the carpet, you begin to see the names of people who sponsored the show. So you're adding value. We can also then say have a stand at the place. So you must give the people value for them to buy into. What happens to a lot of people is that when they have an idea, they give it to the people and they expect, so you're now entitled. You feel like because I have this idea, uh, give it to me. They want to see the benefits. It's the same way somebody who wants to employ you would want to see the benefits that you bring to the organization before they give you the job. So when they then give you this job, what some people will ask for an arm and a leg if they are sponsoring. So 
the last show that I did, somebody sponsored and gave us a uh, hundred million. And I told the person, I said, would you be able to speak for like two, three minutes? The man was like, yes, 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 yes. So he jumped at it. And he came on say, I think he did about like six minutes. And people were like, oh, is there enough? Is there enough? But he saw that there was value in it because he sold himself to the people. Every time you have the opportunity of making a client see the value, you improve your relationship with the client. Um, most times, what people think is about money. First, create the value. If the people can then link that value to how much you are asking, they'll pay. It is when they can't link the value to what you are offering that they then say, oh no. And that's when they even cut prices. Like if the client we had, the sponsor we had before used to give us 50, 60 yeah. when we we're doing January 1st. Yeah. And it is that that also the sponsorship yeah. also helps you reduce price of gates. Yeah. Yeah. So if I'm planning a show, I'm paying out of January 1st costs me about like 130, 140. Yeah. Million. Million. And because we buy a car, we give out gifts, we sponsor uh, IVF, we do a lot of all those things. Sponsor entrepreneurs. And blessing, just so. Now, when I talk to the client and the client sees that those are the things that we want to do, it makes them very happy to be part of the project. Yes. But you have to give them value. We, we brand buses, and when they come to the venue and see the quality of people that are there, they want to be part of it again. Yes. When this client, the old client came and saw what we did for this new client that paid a bit more than they paid, they now say, why did you do this for us? And I'm like, sir, you didn't pay as much as this client did. So we then did A, B, C, D, above and beyond the call of duty for this person. So it is what they give to you that makes you, uh, okay, just like what Jesus said, it is what comes in. <laughs> That's, it's not what comes in. Yeah, the is what then goes out. Yeah. So what comes in may be three naira. Yeah. They will give you value of eight naira. Yeah. Next time, what would they tell you? Pay ten naira. You don't find a problem in it. Yeah. But when the person sponsors, yeah. and it happens a lot, there used to be one bank there, NIB, that used to sponsor stage plays mm -hmm. for them at the jockey back in the days. And they were sponsoring a lot of plays. Mm -hmm. So when they sponsor, they say four days run. So there's a command performance yes. and three days public. Yes, yes. And after a while, the sponsors then found out that when you pay these people for the four day run, once they do command performance, they do one more day and that's all. Yeah. Yeah. And then when the people then even do it, they don't pay the actors. Yeah. There's a guy's name uh, that's coming that I won't, I won't mention it because. So the guy did that and NIB caught it. So you're not doing well also then affects other people. Sure, sure. So sponsorship is not just about you. It's about, because when you fail to do something, it then affects any other person that is coming to. So your business affects other people, even in the creative space. Yeah, so, so I, I mean, I think, I think that's, that's a full breadth of what you said. Giving value determines sponsorship. Um, uh, DJ Gosprell, let me, let me go to you. Yeah. This is a business question. Okay. Um, Music production and music promotion. Yeah. What are the other small, small things that people can get from it? I'm not, I'm not a sound engineer. Okay. So I'm not technical. I can't produce music. But I want to be involved in that process. I want to make money from that process. What else can I do? Aside from music production. Aside from produce. No, I want to, I want to make money from you when you are producing the music. Yeah. I want to play a role. Uh, what else can I do? You have to be technical to be part of a production process. Yes, because once you get into the studio, uh, Dr. Noah, I mean, he, he owns a studio. Once you get into the studio environment, it's, it's not a technical thing. Yes, uh, if you, if the only thing that you can add is if you have good ears. He's producing, he plays a chord, and you are like, and then you have to be a DJ. DJs are the best producers in the whole wide world because they have ears for good sound, yes? And then he plays a chord, and I'm like, hmm, I used to do a lot of that for the late Sammy Oposo, yeah? And I'm like, hmm, Sammy, no, 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 not be like that. Do it like this, Sammy. <clears throat> He gets angry and all that, but at the end of the day, we always arrived at a point where we agreed with each other on what should be done. Yes? In that environment, 
is technical, except you have uh, uh, equipment to sell to them. If, if you do not have, uh, you know, the music sense, can I, can so I make, to speak. Can I make money from just recommending your studio, for instance? Oh, yes, you can. So, oh, so of I, course, I can you get can. a percentage from that. Oh, yes. Like, I mean, I recommend people to him and I'm like, okay, go there. He produces jingles. He does this. He does that. I don't collect money anyways because <laughs> I don't want to cut his own shot. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. You okay. know, it's just PR on the side. Recommendations. Lots of money come from that. That's a business strategy for some people. Yeah. Recommendations. You just uh, know a lot of people. Just know a lot of people that do a lot of things that you know can bring in money where people uh, would be interested in. Like venues, for instance. If I am, I might just leave the production part. Venues, for instance. People come to me and they ask me, because well, I want to do an event. Which venue do you think we should use? The first question is, how many people are you expecting? He tells me, I recommend about five places. Of course, I have to be the DJ or provide the equipment or something because I will not just give you advice for free. You know, so. Fantastic. Yes. Fantastic. Yes. Fantastic. Yes. Okay. Okay. I, I think that's excellent. Um, mm. Omoba, let me come to you, sir. Um, there's this question. It's, I mean, the question is all around here. You, you do not, you said you are not a celebrity or you don't want to address yourself as a celebrity. But the questions are, some of you that are in charge of this entertainment industry in Nigeria, you are not accessible. So how can they meet you to sell ideas? Most we always organize a round table for them to ask you questions or to bring ideas to you. Ali Baba says he's an ideas man. There are a lot of us here too who can think, we have ideas. But how do we reach you, really? Well, I think it's an issue of um, individual. Obviously, it, it, I think it's an issue of the individual, but more, more than that, it's an issue of the system you put in place. Because the challenge there a lot of times is that you don't, with the kind of systems we put in place, and I'm sure that um, um, our senior you know, brother here will agree, you don't need to be talking to us first a lot of times. Because we put in place structure. I'm sure that when Auntie Joker also comes, she will let you know that there are people who work with us that you know will not let you know where you need to see us because a lot of times when you come with an idea or something it doesn't mean that the person that we have put in place is going to tell you no because a lot of times you can imagine what it means i run a tv station and aside from that i i i we're, 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 i also run a lot of other things apart from you know having a tv channel we're building a children's channel as well and some other things we're doing so to get my time is tough i'm, I'm on the back end you know putting all that out and I have people who work with me who can sit down with you and have that conversation clearly. You don't need to see me as first person. And if they need, like, like he was, he's been saying, if you have value and you need to see me, then I'll come to that meeting. But you just don't walk into my office and say you want to see me first. It, it doesn't work that way. I'm, I'm, I'm working, I'm doing a lot of back-end stuff because you are systems people. If anything happens to you, entire systems collapse. And if you, if you plot the ecosystem we put in place for what we were saying, it's like a TV station now. What are you doing? You're dealing with legal people. You're dealing with content people. You're dealing with engineers. You're dealing with content producers. You're dealing with cameramen. There are like nothing less than 50, 100 people who are having food on their thing because of one person. So you don't want to worry that person with every little idea you have. That's why we go out of our way to employ people who can sit down with you and have that conversation with you. When you now bring value to the table and they need to bring us into a conversation, then they bring us into a conversation and then you get what you're looking for. But we should not be the first person you should be looking for. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Yes, DJ Gosborella, add to that. Let me add to that, yes. Just because you know someone or you know someone that knows this person does not mean you should just walk into the person and start like someone someone met me at an event just because you know me we have greeted and all that and he said i just released a cd and i'm like excuse me say i just ah, Gusparella, i just released a cd see i'm now making listen to her so you can play it for me are you serious right now I said, okay, I've heard. It's like, have the CD. So in his presence, so he will know that I mean it. I took the CD and put it on top of a table and walked out. You, you don't do that. 
Yeah. Somebody met me uh, somewhere and he said, Baba, I need you to help me do this stuff. The first question I asked was, do you follow me on any of my social media platforms? And he said, no, you have to give something to get something. If you know get money, the next thing you should do is know how to approach people. First and foremost, there's somebody you want to meet who you know is very important to you. Follow him on social media. When he posts, like it. Write messages there. DM him. One day, he will just like, who is this person? And then he reaches out to you. If you do not have any way to meet somebody, you should sow seeds. Throw water in your front so you will walk on, uh, 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 on wet ground. Don't, don't just because you know somebody. You, you, Rome was not built in a day. Yeah, somebody called me and he says, Gusbrella, I need you to listen to my song. And I'm like, okay, that's going to cost you like 50K. And he said, ah, just to listen to my song. And I said, yes. He said, ah. And I'm like, what is the ah about? If the advice I'm going to give to you is not valuable to you, why are you asking me to do it? Why are you not ask conductor, make him listen to your music? So you, you, you have to put value to people, access to, you, you do not just open your door down for everybody to walk in. So before I used to like, okay, fine, you want to talk to me, I don't mind. Somebody even asked me one time, do you even know who you are? I said, yes, I do. Why do you talk to everybody? I said, because I love everybody. He said to me, it's not, it's not going to work that way. I never used to block people. Nigerians made me to start blocking people. Yeah, because the more you block them, the more they hold you in high esteem. Why? I don't know. All right. All right. Thank you. That's, that's, is that blocking blockchain? <laughs> okay. All right. Um, somebody asked a question. I'm a final year law student who aspires to get into entertainment, who aspires to become an entertainment lawyer. How do I get my spot? Um, I'm a lawyer, so let me help you answer that question. Ebuka was my classmate at law school. We used to sit side by side each other. After law school, he went to do an LLM in the US in entertainment law. So everything he's doing right now, he has picked more knowledge from that area. I went to do corporate and commercial law in my LLM. That's why I'm doing the things I'm doing right now. Okay, I'm in that direction. I love entertainment, but I'm not schooled enough in that area. So your, your passion should drive what you learn in that area, okay? All right, so. That answers that question. So I'm also a panelist too. Clap for me. I answered one question. <laughs> All right, Ali Baba, let me ask you this question. You no, know, you know, you have done too many things today. This manual that you gave to us has opened our score. In a few minutes, in 30 minutes, you did so much to open this. Now, the first question you answered to for me now, you are not going to explain. You're just going to list on your fingers and your toenails if you have. Just tell me all the businesses that you are involved in. Just be listing them. Just be listing them. Because people introduced Alibaba as a comedian. Okay? And maybe he was a comedian only. But I want him to debunk that myth right now. Just the list them. Just the list them. Will they count? Uh, you say, yeah, lawyer, are you working with FIRS? <laughs> <laughs> because I know <laughs> I'm not in FRS. I know nobody in FRS is here. I've checked your profile. Okay, so, so I and the major ones to just do that. I'm into properties. I'm properties, into, are you hearing? I'm into oil and gas. Oil and gas, are you hearing? Uh, I'm into restaurants. Rest, are you hearing? I actually just moved my restaurant to London, uh, the patio. Una de year. And why, why, Sorry, why you moved you? your restaurant to London. Yeah, we had a place in, uh, we call it a DA, it was on uh, Fallout Okay, DA. Yeah. And then um, the owner of the property decided he wanted to sell. Uh, we offered, he offered five, he asked for 500, we offered 350 million, and he said no, that he wanted 500, and we said no, I want person bought. And the person was planning to resell because as soon as they finish the road, the price will go up yeah. and the person sold. But I, I don't think that uh, I was ready to give 350 million to anybody. Actually, rent is higher here 
than the UK. And even in the UK, you don't put cash down. There, if property is worth 350 million, you'll be paying either 20,000 monthly or 30,000 monthly till you can exit the mortgage anytime if you negotiate. I, I think our, our topic last year for this round table was real estate business. Maybe we should have called you for that too. <laughs> Okay, you, you have listed so, restaurant so, business. Okay, so okay. I, I do restaurant. Yeah. I do script writing. Script writing uh, for cop for politicians. For politicians. Uh, I do script writing for politicians. So if uh, you invite like uh, the minister to go speak on any issue, and uh, we can we can write the script out for him, and he will present it, and it will look like he. What are they here? I also I ghost write. You ghostwrite. I'm a ghostwriter for books and biographies. Uh, I'm a ghostwriter. I'm a, a communication expert because I can I can come up with adverts. I will write the copies. I can come up with um, a marketing trend for you and scheme for you to promote any product. I can also work on the analysis of any product. If the product is flying well or if it's not, um, I consult for for philanthropic agencies for better impact. So, so most times, some agencies That's free consultancy. They pay for this. So, so, so if, for instance, uh, Bill Gates Foundation wants to come in and promote uh, anti-malaria drugs, and also, yes. we can then consult and say, I think this is where the impact will most felt. Okay, cool. And above all, uh, I have the TV station. Um, I sell ideas, like I said, and I can... Um, I can just say that I, I make I make enough. <laughs> okay. Can you can you can you can you see no I can't take any more questions. Can you see one man being introduced as a comedian in in an industry that Oh yes, I'm an MC. Sense. I'm an MC you're an, comedian. You're an MC as well too. You're an artist manager too. Uh, you have some artists. And then sometimes uh, they, these people made a actor from me, but they, these people don't they don't charge money. <laughs> She will come and say hello. They don't charge for <laughs> hey, true. All of you, please give this lady and all her colleagues a round of applause. When when they called me to come and act in wedding party, yes. she was one of the first people that I called. I said they called me to act in wedding party. I told her to pay 10 million. She screamed. She said, 10 million. Ah, no, they won't, they won't pay you that amount. We don't charge that much. I said, ah, why? She, I, said, I said, but you and I have worked as MC before. You know how much we charge to be MC. She said, that is different. That acting, the, we are doing, and it's a labor of love, really. So I don't tell people that I'm an actor because <laughs> there's no money there. <laughs> I'm the <a> worker pass. <laughs> because there's no money there. The, it, what you do, what you charge, for a three hours job, you won't get it for a five days, seven days, sometimes two weeks shoot. So these people just do it to make sure that you are happy. And for them, it's a passion that they have. Yeah. Because if, that's why I don't do movies. So if you want me to do movie, and I will take, I will just do it and take the money that you are giving me, like just an aside, but there's no so I'm 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 a comedian and MC. You are not an actor. <laughs> you are an actor. You do that. You do that out of uh, philanthropy just to donate to the masses. <laughs> but but the thing is that they have more mileage. That's the other thing that you don't yeah, If yeah. you do one movie, ten years later people are seeing you and going, "Ah, it's a me bow, oh, Neil. Yeah. Meanwhile, they forgotten the jokes you cracked four years ago. <laughs> four weeks ago, actually. <laughs> Okay, all right. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Please put your hands together for that. What, sir, um, they say, how, do you, how does getting a degree relate to your creativity? Is it really important to go to school? Um, do, you, do you have a mileage if you are not a university or polytechnic graduate, sir? I, I think that question is very vital. <clears throat> but... A university degree has the role it plays, especially because of where everything is going. Knowledge is key. But we also agree that there's a lot of role mentoring, hands-on also gives you. Everybody who is a practitioner in Nigeria will tell you that Nigeria is a different kettle of fish entirely. It's a different ballgame. And so 
um, with whatever knowledge you have, you have to add that hands-on knowledge. That if you don't move close to those who are at the center of the conversation, you will not get how it goes. So um, I would say this to you. Go and get the knowledge, the university degree, the training, whatever it is. I mean, there are many of our practitioners now who are opening schools, who are doing master classes. Please go. It shows you are serious because there are things they will teach you there that like Gosmela was saying initially, when you do those kind of things and you now approach people like maybe Auntie Jocker Silva for an opportunity to just intern her and stuff like that, then she can take you serious. You know, but a lot in the Nigerian context in what I've learned, the internship does a lot more for you. So if you had the head knowledge and you are not volunteering and you are not having mentors who can sit you down, walk you around it, what you have might not see you through. So in my uh, observation, you have to have both the knowledge and then the internship or you go and volunteer or whichever way you can bring yourself under the service of somebody who has gone ahead of you. It will really, 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 really go a long way at the end of the day because whatever education you have, really, let's even talk about education basically. It just teaches you how to interface with life. It gives you basic social skills of how of, of what you call terms of engagement. So once you have that, there's no way you will not use it in what you're doing and, and the things that you need to be able to do. That's how I would look at it. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to ask DJ Gosporella this question and if you can wrap it up in 45 seconds or one minute because of our time. Um, it says, it's a yes or no question, but I want you to just put a little context to it. Um, I think there was... Um, Obi Wan, I don't know where Obi Wan is right now. He's still, there. He's still, is he still very active? Okay, I'm, I'm using him as an example for this question. And there are quite a number of them. He says, Is it possible, is it truly possible to combine a corporate job with a career in entertainment? Yes. Okay, just a, a small context. It's yes, very, is a clear answer. Yeah, yes. very, very. I just said it before. I tell the young DJs that I mentor. That when you are growing in the business, just being a DJ only cannot pay your bills. Get a job on the side. It's either another job or you get another craft that you know you can do. And just get it on the side so that you can make some extra money while you are pursuing your purpose of DJing. You know, so it's, it's, it's a very good thing that you Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, this should be my last question for Alibaba. Um, this keep making. Skit making became very popular, especially during COVID. After COVID, I mean, we were not having content. People were using their phones to record things at home, use uh, cap cuts, um, in shots, you version, just exit, uh, edit and share. And they were getting mileage, and people were advertising on their platforms and all that. Uh, but we noticed that most of the people that do skits are the Brother Shaggy's, the MC Macaroni, the Lassisi Elenu, more of upcoming at the time. They are established now, bro, from skit making. Um, but the people like Alibaba, Basaj, Gandoki, I go die. If people don't really do skits, are you allergic to skit? Uh, so we don't do skits. We provide the content for people who do skits. Okay. So if you if you go take Night of a Thousand Laughs and watch like from volume one to volume twenty five you will begin to see a lot more of those kids that are out there now. For instance, I, I did a joke in 1988 uh, when I went to worry, uh, my, my grandmother told me that, uh, that the Nepal staff came with police to arrest some boys. And I said, what happened? He said, one guy came to cut the light. And when he was cutting the light, the boys in the neighborhood came with cutlass and everything. I told him, when you finish cutting, come down. And the guy now said no that he, he came to tighten the so he finished, came down and left. But now there are like four or five skits that I've seen of somebody that is climbing to cut the light and they bring dog and tell the guy when you finish, you come down. Then another one, the guy was there and then and this was the Yoruba guy, he did his own skit and he was waiting with all this uh, jazz and told the guy that anything you caught there, I will cut in your life, you know? <laughs> and so, it's, it's like a remix. So you also see it with songs. Uh, Whitney Houston too did a remix. 
And so there are a lot of people who do that. It doesn't take away from the fact that they are creative and there are some originals. There are some originals. There are a lot of them who do originals, but they, there are some who take uh, the idea and then, and then push it. So for me, uh, they're doing their beats. It is like uh, a musician. There's somebody who is doing reggae, there's somebody who's doing jazz, somebody who's doing uh, calypso, somebody who's doing R&B, uh, some who do choral songs. Yeah. But all of us are singing. Yeah. It's just a platform that is different. And in the um, group that we belong to when we worked with the, for the creative industry, we call them comedy in a sachet. Uh, it's comedy in a sachet, and it's easily consumable. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't need to have a stage or have this one. Once you have a phone, you can consume it. It is the same way that uh, Cowbell came and disrupted the market. Uh, Pig milk was, they were selling it in cans. You must buy the big cup or buy this, the uh, tin, the small tin. And then these people came and started doing it in small sachets. And people were buying it because people needed just 10 naira, 5 naira. Now, to enjoy most of our comedies, you have to, have to be invited to an event or be at that event. But they now made the comedy in the sachet in a way that you can be in Kaduna and benefit from it online. And so they made it available to everybody. So people in, and the numbers are huge. Just like when you have a TV station, uh, like STV, and you're showing Terrestra, if you're showing in Lagos, at most, only two million people have access to watch you. Right? But of those two million, you're not going to get two million people watching at the same time. So you probably will get about, in the share of the market, channels will have about 120,000 uh, people watching. Another person will have AIT, will have this one, will have. This one. But if you go online, you can have 50 million people watch because you've gone global instead of being limited to the. So, what they are doing is they are capitalizing on, or they are, they are honing in on the uh, opportunities that uh, social media provide to provide this sachet comedy to them, and people are taking it up. That's all. And there's no, there's no stress at all. We, we applaud them. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much.